12 by 24. Thermal mass heated, a uh, rocket stove heated thermal mass reserved greenhouse. That's the rocket furnace down in the pit. You can see it's smoking a little bit. Uh, just firing it back up. Uh, sun was out today. Uh, it was about 50 degrees today, well, 48. And um, inside the greenhouse, we spiked out to 93. Man, it felt really nice to go in there this afternoon, work a little bit. Um, you can see the pipe is starting to warm up. Uh, we're coming up out of the smoke of uh, startup and going into the pretty much moisture mode. In a little while, I'll just put the cap on that and it'll start pushing all the uh, heat and smoke will be pushed through the forms underneath the greenhouse and the gases will exit out this pipe. I'll show you that after we take a little look inside. And here we are inside the greenhouse. Current temperature is 77 degrees and 55% humidity. Uh, the stove is just coming back online, like I mentioned, um, so it's not producing a whole lot of heat at the moment. Uh, you can see the uh, rock thermal mass bench underneath the uh, plants here. That's uh, the pipe from that furnace comes out underneath that bench, goes out actually past these posts out to about here. You can see not too far from the door, about seven foot in from the door, and it crosses over here. And it runs back along the outside edge over here and exits out where I showed you. Um, there's more work to do to finish the greenhouse, but uh, it's coming together pretty well. And I have to say now that uh, we've got the furnace issues that we were having straightened out and uh, getting our temperatures up, uh, the soils have warmed up, things are starting to sprout and grow really nice. Uh, even you know, even today, it's the December 27th, we're uh, five days after uh, the winter solstice, and, you know, things are coming. We have yellow wax beans here coming up. I got some nasturtiums in, those aren't up yet. This is uh, Komatsuma, um, two different kinds of radishes, uh, white icicle and scarlet globe, uh, spinach, um, Onions, there's a couple starting to pop now, you can just see. Uh, I got some propagation on uh, rosemary and French tarragon. Uh, it's a rosemary plant that's in recovery from cold and other <laughs> hard environment issues. Um, Chiagia beets coming up. In here. Uh, arugula. Cilantro. More spinach. Uh, I forget what that one is. That's a lettuce. Um, oh, that's a mescaline mix lettuce. Uh, and then, oh, that's a butterhead lettuce, I think. And I think this is a black seeded Simpson. And then, up on the upper racks, there's more lettuce. I think that's another black seeded Simpson. And then we have some St. John's wort, and I forget what this other one is. Let's see if I can reach the tag without falling. <sighs> All right, sweet Thai basil uh, from seeds that I saved from this year under the high nutrition program. So those will be super vigorous when they come up. And yeah, you can see other stuff coming up in there too. That's because the soil is all recycled, remixed. I, uh, I made a vow about a year ago to stop buying soil all together and to mix and make and acquire my own. And uh, so far that program's been really successful. Uh, and then over here, uh, black cumin. Those are coming up and doing pretty well also. Uh, black cumin is, um, has a seed that it produces that is really, really good for recovering your health if you're sick. Uh, it helps with digestive health and a whole host of other things. Uh, check out our forum. Uh, do a search in the forum for black cumin or, or nigella sativa and you'll find uh, all kinds of information on it. Uh, let me grab the standing bucket. Uh, pink and red petunias. Uh, red Russian kale. Two more flats of cilantro. 
Um, I believe this also has sweet Thai basil in this crate. Um, down here are my citrus trees. Uh, they got exposed to the cooler weather uh, when they were in here during the um, during the warm up time here as we were getting things warmed up. So they kind of lost their leaves and took a bit of a hit. But um, I got green shoots on them and they're hanging in there. And uh, I'm hoping as our temperatures are coming back up now, they'll they'll start to come back. Uh, I had a lemon, almond, and an East verbena, and uh, those were having the same same issues. But you can see new sprouts coming on them now, and they're coming back with the temperatures. Same on these guys, and same on these guys. And I was really worried about the lemon verbena because I love my lemon verbena, and I never want to lose that plant. But um, yeah, it's it's hanging in there. Uh, I got pink and patience that I saved from the landlord's front yard. I'm going to propagate those out in the spring for. Her. And then uh, this is chaya that was given to me from Dust Bowl Seeds. Uh, you can see their website for seeds at dustbowlseeds.com. And uh, let's see, this is a uh, citronella uh, geranium. These things are awesome. This is what they make the citronella oil that they use to keep mosquitoes away from this stuff so summertime bugs start bothering me I just take one leaf of this and crush it up and tuck it in my collar or into my hat and no more bugs they don't bother me at all um, this is a pine scented geranium and this plant I wish I could share just how sticky the leaves on this are that's how healthy this thing is it's just it's like it's, it's like glue it's amazing um, but this is doing very well also uh, I have some bloody butcher corn here I threw in just to see uh, if it would germ and all. It seems to be coming up pretty well, so I may, may transplant it and run it out. Uh, my stevia is surviving, at least one stalk of it is. And, uh, when that gets coming back, I'll be propagating that too. And if I can, I'll be capturing some of these seeds and doing some seed selection work with stevia. Uh, what else? Butterfly bush down there. That's uh, from a cutting that I took from a friend's landlord's property and uh, that's doing pretty well happy about that ginger uh, is in this bin but it's not back up yet from the cold shock it took but it will be and then uh, those are carrots Nantes carrots I believe and my little aloe vera plant um, I think that's basically it uh, I just wanted to give you a little tour um, I put up uh, reflective stuff here in the back um, to help throw more sunlight back when the sun's out um, and I also added a second layer of plastic on uh, on the north wall on the inside all the way around and on the bottom you can see the garbage bags sticking out I actually took black uh, 30 gallon trash bags and filled them up with leaves and then uh, I wrapped them onto the rail and and screwed them in place so they would stay up as an insulation base to keep uh, help keep the temperatures up in here. That made a huge difference uh, when I did that uh, on the initial warm up time stuff. And then up top, I uh, I started putting some pine needles in. Uh, I got to go back and finish that out to insulate the top of that. And then when this is all done, there'll be a tank in here somewhere, and I'll be running a, a gutter rail all along the whole length of that. And that whole gutter rail will have a uh, like a plastic piece that curls back here and is tacked to it so that all the moisture coming down here all that condensate that you see gathering will come into the gutter and feed to the tank and still be high enough to feed the sink and all that kind of stuff and then we'll have running water uh, without a pump and that'll be kind of nice uh, I believe that that's pretty much everything for an uh, inside part of the daytime tour. Uh, we'll take you down and give you a peek at the firebox. Well, before we give you a peek at the firebox, I think we're going to uh, let you have a listen to this. Now that this is running, actually it's not running that hard yet, but you should be able to hear it. Gets quite a roar. Uh oh, lens is fogged over. Hold on. Okay, so a quick tour of the furnace. I don't have my fire tanning gloves here, so I gotta be careful. So 
Uh, just hang on a sec. Okay, I got the door open. You are now looking at the heartbeat furnace for the greenhouse. That firebox is 48 inches by 15 inches by 15 inches. So I can actually literally stick a four foot log in there uh, up to about 12 inches in diameter. Uh, I don't usually need to do that. But uh, you can see in here that this is in fact a rocket furnace. And you can hear how fast that's revving up as soon as I let the oxygen in. This thing just went crazy, right? For the fire takeoff in there. So anyway, uh, that's that. Those two pipes going in on either side are the uh, forced hot air convectors that you see coming up next to the catalyzer inside. So it's push hot air, one shoots hot air and circulates it back out and comes in these vent ports on the sides of the furnace. So you get preheated air in, that makes a huge difference in your efficiency of your stove. And the other one shoots hot air directly into the greenhouse, basically forces hot air like any duct and fan system would, except that this doesn't use a duct, uh, doesn't use a fan, it only uses convection and rising air, rising heat to move air. Uh, so if power goes out, doesn't bother me at all. EMP, not a problem. Anyway, that's a quick tour of the greenhouse, and I'm definitely running out of time here on the tape, so talk to you later. Hope you enjoyed.